So the next issue I wanted to get into was um, Medicare for All, but specifically Kamala Harris's Medicare for All plan. And she has a plan that supposedly, well, she calls it Medicare for All, but in reality, it's it involves the private insurance companies. It involves um, insurers that will maintain some sort of public option and everything and that's whatever i mean that's fine if you want to if you believe in that it's perfectly okay to to have a view of the healthcare system that maintains the private insurance i don't agree with it but that's if you that's if that is your position i i'm fine with you believing that um obviously i'm going to oppose it as much as possible but if you want to push that that's fine the problem is is that Kamal Harris, and this is something that she said in the debate as well. I covered it during the debate, um, and you know, had you know, gave my views on it during the debate. And what she did is, she stated that she is in favor of Medicare for all, and that she believes that her Medicare for all plan is going to be. And she keeps calling it Medicare for all. That's the problem. But she says that the, her Medicare for all plan is going to be, you know, obviously better than Bernie Sanders. And then it's going to be the main thing that's going to, you know, get us universal coverage, but it has private, private insurers. So obviously it's not going to get us uh, universal coverage if the private insurance companies are still involved. And so I just wanted to, you know, before we kind of get into my commentary on this, I just wanted to read an article from Politico that kind of gets in the details of, of her, you know, her position and what her plan is and everything. And then we'll discuss it as we read along and following the, following the conclusion of the article. So this uh, article is from Politico. It's the, the title of the article is Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris's new health plan, Medicare for all with private insurers. And then the sub headline says slower than burn, uh, slower than Bernie Sanders, but more ambitious than Joe Biden. How Harris aims to achieve universal health coverage. So let's check it out here. It says Kamal Harris on Monday unveil, unveiled a, uh, a plan to achieve universal health care coverage by growing Medicare with the help of private insurers, an effort that splits the difference with her chief Democratic presidential rivals and equips the California senator with her own signature health care proposal ahead of this week's debates. Medicare works, health, uh, Harris said. I'm sorry, Harris wrote in a uh, Medium essay published Monday morning. Now let's expand it to all Americans and give everyone access to comprehensive health care. Under Kamala Care, <laughs> which would be phased in over a decade, 10 years, by the way, 10 years this plan would take to get to be implemented. Harris has at last settled on a way to keep private health insurers in the fold after seesawing on the question since January. And she would do so by leaning on an existing and popular federal program. Harris's offering maintains her commitment to universal health care coverage demanded by her party's base. I don't know, but that no, that's not the party's base. That's maybe like just kind of like democratic loyalists. Wait, it says you know, maintains her. Yeah, okay, I see what she's. I, th I thought she's. I, sh I thought she meant wanting private insurance. Yeah, that, that's right. The healthcare, universal healthcare coverage is something that the party's base wants. So, like, if they would have said Medicare for all, I would have understood what they meant. But okay, continuing on here, it says while lowering the temperature among the guardians of Obamacare who feared that overreaching would wipe out their hard-fought gains. Kathleen Sebelius, who served as Secretary of Health and Human Services in the Obama administration and was consulted on Harris's plan, blessed it as, quote, a smart way to get Medicare for all, where all individuals and employers can transition smoothly into a system that covers everyone. By the way, right now, Kamala Harris, I'm sorry, um, Kathleen Sebelius, who was the HHS secretary under Obama, apparently works for a healthcare company now. So when she takes a position that embraces Kamala Harris's idea to maintain the private insurers and the healthcare companies, <laughs> I mean, are you surprised by that? That's the way it goes, right? It's not surprising at all. Somebody that's obviously, you know, working for a healthcare company is going to love a, a healthcare plan that maintains those healthcare, the, the, you know, the status and the existence of those healthcare companies. So continuing on here, it says, but Harris's proposal skimps on myriad details, including the plan's cost and will likely still face skepticism from progressives. Worried about propping up insurance companies and the slower pace of change, as well as from conservatives and deep-pocketed healthcare lobbyists, staunchly opposed to any form of Medicare expansion. 
Healthcare has consistently been a top issue, if not the leading concern among voters nationally and in the key early voting, the key early voting states, but has bitterly divided the Democratic uh, primary. Uh, it says, throughout the campaign, Harris has publicly wavered on whether her health plan would eliminate private insurance, and the months of seeming seeming reversals exposed her to bipartisan attacks and criticism that she risked losing inconsistent or worse, looking inconsistent or worse, coming off as pandering. After raising her hand at June's Democratic presidential debate, suggesting she uh, favored abolishing private health insurance, Harris the next day said she had misinterpreted the question, which she took to mean giving up her own private plan to enroll in a government-run plan. <laughs> Wait, I don't, that doesn't make sense, though, because how would you have private? How would you have a private plan for yourself? Kamala Harris is a member of the Senate. She works for the government. So how would she have a private plan? She has a government plan. And the plan, as many people know, the plans that, that people have when they're working for the government essentially is universal government health care. It's Medicare for all, essentially. It's a single-payer system. But it's government-run. Whatever it is, it's government-run health care, you know? And they get funded by the taxpayers, which ironically, they get funded by the taxpayers um, to, to fund their salaries. So their f salaries are funded by us. And... That also means that since we're funding the government with our taxpayers, we're also funding her health care as well. So I don't know why she's talking about how, you know, she would get confused. And because I did a segment on this, too, and I was confused at the time. But now that I see the explanation for it, it says she was she was thinking she thought people she thought the moderators at the last debate was were asking her if she would give up her own private plan. But you're not you don't have private insurance. <laughs> you have government run insurance. Because you're the member of the Senate. Okay, anyway, so, uh, I don't know. I guess it's useless to try and make any sense out of somebody that doesn't make any sense. Um, the next part here says, 70% of Americans favor Medicare for all if given a choice between a government plan and private insurance, according to a recent NPR PBS uh, NewsHour P Marist poll. But just 4 in 10 support a mandatory government plan for all. Harris's new plan breaks with her rivals who occupy the opposite poles of the debate by effectively proposing Medicare for and Medicare Advantage for all, permitting private insurers to continue selling plans akin to the two-decade-old offshoot of Medicare, in addition to letting Americans immediately buy into the traditional Medicare program and adding new benefits, like more me mental health services. Um, it says, as a result... Americans would be able to choose between the public plan and certified private Medicare plans. Harris also said she would immediately enroll newborns and the uninsured in an effort to quickly get to universal coverage if, if elected. Yeah, the rest of this article just gets into like, it, it just talks about how, um, just give some like uh, stats about the Medicare enrollees, um, being covered through Medicare Advantage and um, a couple people commenting. I think it even shows Sibelius here. Um, yeah, it says Catherine Sibelius gave her own little statement, uh, a former Obama administration official who oversaw Medicare, Medicaid, and the Fu Affordable Care Act also commented. And I think that's actually somebody that attacked Bernie Sanders' idea of Medicare for All. His name is Andy Slavitt. So, obviously, he supports whatever Obama did. He doesn't support Medicare for All. So, it's not surprising that he would attack um, Medicare for All. Um, and then it just gets a little into a little bit more regarding regarding Harris's uh, post, which she, she made an article. So, she wrote an article for Medium, which is a, a website that lets you write articles for them. And then, um, kind of gives it's like a platform essentially for articles and so she wrote that article and then just kind of mentions a couple more things she said in that article and yeah that's about it so listen when it comes to these kind of issues regarding democratic you know politicians you shouldn't be surprised at all when they say things that are you know gonna always be like middle ground not even middle ground many times right-wing ideas you know and in this case, Kamala Harris has flip-flopped on the issue of Medicare for All and kind of her health care plan so many times. She's, as in they said it here too, and, and another thing they didn't mention was that after she came out in support of Bernie's plan, so, she, cause Bernie's, so Bernie's Medicare for All plan in the Senate, 
it had, um, I think, 16 co-sponsors, 14 co-sponsors, something like that. 14 to 16 co-sponsors, if I remember correctly. And Kamala Harris was one of them. Kirsten Gillibrand was another one. Elizabeth Warren was another one. So uh, there was a lot of people out there that were supporting. I think even Cory Booker was one of them. So there was a lot of senators out there that were supporting Bernie Sanders, plan after years of people just like refusing to even acknowledge the existence of a government-run system, you know, being implemented, especially since Obamacare was portrayed as being government-run and it wasn't at all. So because it involved the insurance companies, obviously, and it has the individual mandate, which, you know, it's a right-wing idea. The whole plan was a right-wing idea that was implemented by Mitt Romney in Massachusetts and championed by right-wingers in the past, too. So, but, you know, this is an issue, obviously, that, she, you know, like I said, she has flip-flopped on multiple times, multiple, uh, multiple occasions, and Harris knows that she needs to walk a fine line to make sure not to piss off the donors, the establishment, the, you know, kind of the status quo maintaining, you know, people in the elitist circles of, you know, Washington, D.C. And she wants to walk that fine line because, she, yeah, she, she, knows who's, she knows how her bread is buttered and she knows what she has to say to get votes. Now, whether this is going to get her votes, ultimately, it's not going to get her votes among progressives, that's for sure. Now, whether it's going to get her votes among the establishment elites and stuff and Democratic loyalists, yeah. Definitely, no doubt about it. But the the question ultimately comes down to is, is her plan actually going to work? And in my opinion, it's not, because I don't see any kind of, I don't, I don't see this being any different than what Obama, to be fair, it's not the same as Obamacare, obviously, but it's it kind of goes down that same path that's it's it, it's that same mentality of doing what obama said he would do and then doing like just like doing it just short because you know oh my god you don't want to over promise right you don't want to say anything you don't want to give too many bold promises god forbid because if you do then it's like you know to these people it's like you know you're going too far and then you know it, and then it's they just <laughs> I mean, it's, that's the thing, though. These politicians, they're just so, like, they're just so focused on trying to cater. They want to cater to, um, they want to cater to that establishment lead, and they want to do the things that's going to keep them happy. And it's very unfortunate, because at the end of the day, you're not giving a shit about the people that are truly suffering. And... I mean, it's not surprising, but it's disappointing every time you see it happen like that. Because you, I don't know, I guess maybe maybe you expect better. I don't know, I'm definitely, maybe I'm too naive, but I definitely expect better. I don't expect such corruption to take place. And well, I know it's going to take place, but I don't expect this kind of corruption to continue and be, you know, continue to be allowed, you know? Because that's just like, it's it's very disappointing. And the fact that it continues to be allowed and the fact that it's it's something that people don't they don't really care to like they don't care to call it out only progressives are calling it out is just astonishing to me so i mean if you are okay if those people are okay with it then you're going to continue having shitty health care and i just wanted to play you guys a clip this is a clip of jank uger of tyt making an appearance on uh the rising which is a, a, sh a show it's on it's an online show which is um produced by the hill the hill is a it's a mainstream publication but this show is actually really good and it's hosted by two people that are fair i would say they're left-leaning or f to the left for sure and they um bring on a lot of good progressives they brought on nina turner they brought on jank as i'm going to show you um kyle kalinsky um I think Michael Brooks, who's also another um, YouTube host, progressive guy. Um, I believe David Pakman may have gone on there too. So yeah, they brought on a lot of lefties for sure. So I want to hear. I want you guys to hear Jenk here talk about why the role of the insurance companies is not a good idea. He's going to give a really good explanation that I had never thought about myself, and I just want to hear you guys uh, uh, get you guys to hear hear this and see how he explains it. Check it out. So, Jenk, one of the other things that's interesting in the primary recently is this debate over Medicare for All. You now have uh, some others coming out saying, well, not Medicare for All, Medicare for those who want it, Medicare extra. There, that really seems to be what the debate, debate is in the party. What, what do you make of that? I think it's a trick. Uh -huh. So, uh, look, it's not that the public option is disastrous. Uh, it it would be a slight improvement on the system we have now. That is why progressives fought for it when we were doing the Affordable Care Act. And who sold us out? 
establishment Democrats. Joe Lieberman said no, and then Obama and Schumer bowed their heads and said, yes, sir, absolutely, sir. If your corporate donors in Connecticut don't want it, sir, then it's unacceptable. Progressives, the public option is terrible, they told us back then, and we can't have it. We must give in to the Republicans and Joe Lieberman. Well, now they come and tell me that the public option is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, first of all, make up your mind. Second of all, it's obvious that progressives are correct when we keep pushing you further left, because that's where the public is. In a democracy, you might want to appeal to voters. I know it's a wild and crazy idea. Medicare for all polls is 70 percent. And what, establishment Democrats say that's not popular enough? No, it's intensely popular with voters. It's not popular with their donors. Somebody's got to say it for the love of God. It's the corruption, stupid. They're corrupt. That's why they don't want to do it. So in terms of the Medicare extra, their number one problem right now, policy-wise, is if you set up that uh, uh, private insurance option, they'll take the healthiest Americans because they have a profit motive, and they'll drive down the prices for those healthiest Americans. But that's not how insurance works. That ruins the insurance pool, and then they unload all the costliest sickest uh, people onto Medicare and then go, oh, can you believe how much it costs? It's a trick. Don't fall for it. That's a great argument put forth by Cenk Uger. I mean, that, I never thought about that. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert on on, you know, kind of healthcare and, and the insurance companies and how they're involved. It's a very complicated <laughs> topic. But when I heard this, I was like, damn, that's so true. Like, I never thought about that. And Jank put it perfectly, and he, you know, he's not somebody I always agree with these days. He's become a little bit too neoliberal-ish, in my in my opinion, and the opinion of many progressives out there. And he seems to be a lot more of a war, you know, Elizabeth Warren supporter than Bernie. But he's absolutely right on that one. And <laughs> it's also funny how they, how he points out that progressives were in favor. I remember this too. Progressives were in favor of the public option back when the Obamacare debate was taking place. And they completely got rid of it. They were like, fuck you. We don't want that shit. Oh, you know, public option is terrible. We can't have that. We can't have a public option. Everything has to be private insurance. Now, now that the, the, the debate has been shifted to more of a universal health care, Medicare for all, single payer conversation, now they're like, oh, public option, that's wonderful. We bow down to the anybody that, that loves the public option. We have to push for that. That's something that we need. So they're just opportunistic as opportunistic pricks as usual. But that point about insurance that that you know, I just want to go, you know, kind of emphasize that a little bit. When he, you know, Jack makes that argument there, it's so true. What you do is you put all the money, so you put, I'm sorry, you put all the, um, you, you, you give the people that have, that have the, 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 the healthier people. So the, the people that are healthier, like myself, I'm very healthy. You put me on, you know, on a, on a private insurance plan, you know, I'm not going to be, how much money is it going to cost for me to be on a private insurance plan? I'm not going to get sick that often. Now, somebody that's, whatever, 50 years older than me, you know, you know, my parents, for example, or, you know, some, you know, any of you guys, any of you guys out there, your parents, they're going to need health care coverage. They're going to need coverage that's going to be as, as comprehensive and as, you know, as, as, awesome as possible as great as possible as, as useful as possible it can't be a private insurance plan that's super expensive so if you so they're going to need a medicare for all uh, medicare for all or more of a medicare system now if you have those private insurers involved they're going to again they're going to put those healthier americans like myself on that plan and they're going to be like oh, okay that's great wonderful you have private insurance it's it's one it's you know it's great you know no problem see how great it works but then you put the people that that uh, that are the sickest that need medicare and all the cost is going to be you know is going to come out of that because so many of the sick people are going to need that care and then it's going to cost so much money and then people say look how expensive it is look how, look at this this is crazy medicare for all or medicare it's terrible because a lot of people what they do is they they kind of convolute the existence of medicare and then say well because medicare has its issues where by the way, it's polls really, really well, Medicare itself. Um, they said, well, look, you know, we'll look at all the issues there are with Medicare, and then you're going to have those same issues with Medicare for all. I've covered an article from a couple, you know, past, one of the past episodes that I did where this idiot right winger was saying, like, oh, look how terrible Medicare is, and it's, there's so much fraud going on in Medicare, and then that's going to, the same thing is going to happen with Medicare for all. It was a totally ridiculous hack article, um, not surprisingly. But 
it's you know but that's the thing these you know these people put out these ridiculous arguments and these statements that just don't make any sense and it just they end up looking like idiots and when it comes to the idea of medicare they you know this is what the this is what the insurance companies want to do anytime you know on a, on on more specifically when you have these insurance companies involved they end up having their foot in, they end up having to be able to get their they, they get their foot in the door and they're able to influence how medicare you know how medicare and the kind of the enrollment of medicare and people on medicare how it's going to be you know handled so when the insurance companies are involved they get to control the kind of the the cost effectiveness of medicare like i said you know the sicker people are going to need to be on medicare because that's the government run program while, while the private insurers are going to be better for people like myself who just need to get care every now and then because then it costs them less so obviously because the private insurers they don't want to give you know they don't want to have to be able to give away their you know they don't want to be able to they don't want people to get too much care unless they're paying out of pocket if they got to pay for it then it's like oh my god we don't want to have that right Whereas when you have a government-run program, that comes from the government. And then, you know, many people in the government are bought out by health insurance companies and big pharma. They don't want to have to, they don't want those, com you know, they don't want any kind of government to be involved because the private insurers don't want them to be involved. And they're bought out by the private insurers and the, and the healthcare companies and big pharma. So those people tell them what to do. And they said, don't have a healthcare, you know, government healthcare program. And then that's what Medicare for All is. That's what Medicaid is, you know, Social Security, all that stuff. So... Yeah, having the insurance companies involved is a terrible idea. We do not need them there. We do not need them to, to you know, be dictating our 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 lives and and you know restricting the things that we need to be doing to maintain our um our our you know our quality of life. You know, our our life to where we want to live as long as possible without getting sick obviously and they they're the ones who just want to make profits off of our lives and that's ultimately what it comes down to and we have to put a stop to that